Hey guys, Ashley here with another Bible study video. And today we're actually going to be in-depth studying um, Proverbs 31. And so we're just going to be in-depth studying this in a fun, kind of very unique way that God just opened my eyes to this awesome, just researching and studying Proverbs 31 and he opened my eyes to new things that I can't wait to share with you guys. Before you really dive into this, if you guys want, you can totally get this printable off of my website for Proverbs 31. Um, and I'll be using this today for my in-depth Bible study. And so it's on the Coffee and Bible Time website. I'm gonna be using these three colors in my Bible today. So purple, pink, and orange. And these are from the Daily Grace Company. They're their new highlighters. And I just actually love these so much. I'll have these linked down below too. Okay, so we have here opened in the Bible, Proverbs 31. We're gonna start by getting to know the text. And so pretty much all that is, is reading through Proverbs 31 and then summarizing what you just had read. So I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video and just to read through all of Proverbs 31. Quiet your heart, quiet your mind, pray that God would open your eyes to new things and just pause the video and read through Proverbs 31 right now. Um, and so you can write out your own summary, but I'm just going to show you guys what my summary is just from reading through the text once. This describes how a godly woman should live her life and the character qualities she should have, like trusting in God and being a hard work worker. Her life is rooted in the fear of the Lord. She respects and obeys God and her life is characterized by wisdom. And this is just like kind of surface level. This is what I got from reading it one time through. So that's what we pretty much just read about overall. I just love doing right at the beginning of my Bible study, um, just being able to summarize what I just read. So I kind of know, am I getting what I'm reading? But now let's go a little deeper. So we're gonna start with who wrote it. Okay, guys, lol. Don't judge my spelling. So the writer is King Lamuel. And we see that right at the very beginning of the proverb. It says, right at the beginning of the proverb, the words of King Lamuel. So we know who the writer was. Now you may be wondering, all right, well, who is King Lamuel? I've never even heard of him. Biblical scholars don't really know. They're not sure. Some think it may be a king from a neighboring country, but honestly, they're not really sure because he's never mentioned as a king of Israel or Judah in the Bible. So they're thinking maybe a king from a neighboring country, some Bible scholars even think maybe it was King Solomon. They're not sure. But we know that it's a budding king. But here's the thing. Yes, the writer was King Lamuel, but it really says that this is not from his own he didn't get this word first, but it was an inspired utterance of what his mother taught him. So he's pretty much writing this down saying, all right, these are the words of wisdom that my mom taught me. And we know that a lot of mothers out there, not all, but a lot of mothers like my own are wise. So we know this is wise teaching. So we also know who the writer is, but who is it written to? And Proverbs is pretty much um, written to the youth and the wise and those seeking wisdom. It was also written to um, the younger generation awaiting marriage and adulthood. Can I say that this is really applicable to us as well? Because I know for me, I'm youth, I'm seeking wisdom, I wanna become more wise and I'm not married yet and I wanna get the best wisdom I can before I do get married. So what is this whole text that we're studying written about. So I'm gonna put what is it about. And it's pretty much about noble character 
in a wife. That's what it's mainly about. And we know it's about a king wrote it and this is what his mom is teaching him to look for in a lady. So when was it written? It was written 970 to 931 BC. So that is before Christ. So we know, and this was around Solomon's time, and he was a king. This was during the time when there were kings in Israel, and Israel just kept turning away from God and coming back to God and turning away. We are currently right here on the timeline. This is where we are in the history. So Jesus doesn't come till here, but right now we're in the time of Solomon, the kings, King David was just here. He had a son, Solomon. Solomon wrote Pro most of Proverbs before the time of Jesus. So the next question is where was it written and where was it written in Israel, the Jewish kingdom? So we need to ask ourselves why. Why was this written in the first place? What's the point of it? So a faithful mother was teaching her son and pouring her wisdom into him and he was inspired to write about it. So now we honestly have a general idea of the background of this text and that is super important to know when you are studying the Bible. Before you ask the question, what does this passage have to do with me? You need to ask the question, what does this passage have to do with the original reader? We need to put ourselves in their shoes. How were women valued in their culture during this time? So what was their role in their everyday life? What did people think of women back then? That women started off with a bad negative view because of what Eve had done. And so they had the beginning parts of the Bible back then, so they believed that women's nature was subordinate to men, so that they men pretty much believed that they could take advantage of women, and that women were the source of all evil because Eve was the first one to sin in the Garden of Eden. That they were legal property to men, they had no rights. So they were counted as property, just as property, almost like a horse or something like that. They had no role in society except childbearing. So they shouldn't have a job, they shouldn't have an education, they shouldn't um, be a part of um, church or anything like that. They had no role. So they were also confined to the home. So a lot of times these women just stayed at home all day every day they couldn't leave they had no point in leaving because they had no role in society they had no education they had to worship separately than the men they couldn't learn the torah which is their bible their scriptures for themselves sadly is that they couldn't read it because they didn't have an education so moving on is what are the lies from the surrounding cultures so we see this is the role in judaism so in their culture, but this right here is lies from the surrounding cultures. So women did not have freedom to determine their own lives. And it stunk because sons were valued more than daughters back then. So when they had daughters, honestly, a lot of the baby girls were killed because the families didn't want daughters. They only wanted sons. And so daughters were not valued. They were looked upon as nothing and a lot of times were killed. So again, the girls had no education. The ancient teachings laid the foundations for these girls. And what this culture believed trickled into what the Israelites believed. Um, so for example, Homer, Hesoid, Sermonoids, they were all poets back then. And in their writings, Women were degraded and looked down upon and seen as a curse to all men. Literally a curse. Moving on to philosophers, men and highly regarded people listened to them. And they also degraded women in the way they talked and wrote about women. And so even Greek tragedy and comedy plays, their plays, um, their writings, people in, who have power 
women were beat down upon in these plays and in these books. Their culture was just thriving on the fact that women were absolutely nobodies. What they believed was that the only place for women was in the confines of her home. The sad thing is, is that men abused their power over women. So that was the biggest thing back then was that men abused their power over these women. And it's really sad because that's not how God made it to be. God made Adam and he said, this is not good. He needs a woman along his side to come help him and to strengthen him and build him up. And they were believing so many lies. So the top three lies of their culture were number one, pink. Women were no good. They mess things up from the beginning. They are the source of all sin and evil because of Eve. Eve messed it up, man. Therefore, because Eve messed up, all women are bad. The next lie, which is gonna be orange, is women could only bear children. They had no role in society. And then the last lie, which is purple, is um, that women were just a piece of property. Husbands could take advantage of them. So how does this all connect back into the Proverbs 31 text? Well, let's see. The Proverbs 31 women lived in a culture full of lies. Uh-huh, big time. But she lived a countercultural life and proved the lies wrong through the way she lived her life. So literally the Proverbs 31 woman was a girl boss. She defeated lies. But now let's read through Proverbs 31, 10 through 31 again. And this time let's focus on how she overcame the culture's lies. Highlight these areas with the colors above. I'm just gonna transfer this into the top part of my Bibles. I'm going to go through this text and see how she defeated these lies. Who can find a wife of noble character? So we see this first line already. You might be asking like, what even is noble character? To me, noble character is honestly looking like Jesus. Looking and living like Jesus. Holy and um, mature and loving. The Proverbs 31 woman has noble character. And does that go against this? Absolutely. You, If you are the source of all sin and evil, you cannot have noble character. So there you go, booyah, already fighting the lies on the first line. She is far more precious than jewels, the heart of her husband trusts in her, and she will not lack anything good. Um, wow. So I'm gonna go in here with purple. So this goes back to this lie, just a piece of property husband could take advantage of. Her husband is trusting in her, and it says that she is far more precious than jewels. So she is more than just an object. She is more than what the world is telling her she is. So she rewards him with good, not evil, all the days of her life. Holy cow, women are the source of all sin and evil, but it's saying she rewards him with good, not evil. That's amazing. In verses 13 through 19, I'm going to block that off in orange. So she selects wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like a merchant ship, bringing her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and portions for her female servants. She evaluates a field and buys it. She plants a vineyard with her earnings. She draws on her strength and reveals that her arms are strong. She sees that her profit is good and her lamp does not go up and it go out at night. She extends her hand to the spinning staff and her hands hold the spindle. I'm gonna jump to 22. 
She makes her own bed coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple, 24. She makes and sells linen garments. She delivers belts to the merchants, 27. She watches over the activities of her household and she is never idle. She is never lazy. Let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Holy guacamole, is she not a legit girl boss? So the reason why I highlighted all this in orange was because if you go over to the lies sheet, it says women could only bear children. No role in society. Look at the big role that she is playing in society right here. She is literally pouring into her community, pouring into her society. She is contributing to society. She is going above and beyond of what was expected of her, working unto the Lord and not unto men. Look at what she does because she is working unto the Lord and she is not letting any expectations from the people around her control her and tell her what she can and can't do. She is letting the Lord be her guide and tell her what she can and can't do. So I'm going to go back to pink and going into verse 20, 20 through 21, her hands reach out to the poor and she extends her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of her household when it snows. Verse 25 says, strength and honor are her clothing and she can laugh at the time to come. Her mouth speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Opens her hands to the poor. So that means she has good in her heart that she wants to give away. That is overflowing from her heart, love in her heart. She is not afraid and it says she can laugh at the time to come. And so what that shows me is that she has love in her because perfect love casts out all fear. I put, she has no room for fear because she has so much love in her heart. She has so much love in her heart that it's overflowing to others. She speaks wisdom and loving instruction is on her tongue. So we know from James that the tongue is the most evil part of the body. So she has love on her tongue and she has wisdom on her tongue, opposite of evil. If she were evil, she would have evil things coming out of her mouth all the time. And this right here is the verse of all verses in Proverbs 31. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So the Proverbs 31, women fears the Lord. And guess what? Fearing God is respecting God and obeying him. And that is the absolute opposite of evil. So we know, coming back to this first lie, women were no good. They messed things up from the beginning. They are the source of all evil. That is a complete lie that the Proverbs 31 women, through the actions of her life, like giving to the poor, laughing without fear of the future, having love and instruction on her tongue, and even fearing the Lord, through all these things, she proves this lie wrong through her actions. We haven't talked much about this last lie that she is just a piece of property and her husband could take advantage of her. Let's look a little more into that. We see um, verse 23, we're going to highlight in purple and it says her husband is known at the city gates where he sits among the elders of the land. Um, another verse is 28 and 29 that says her children rise and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women have done noble deeds, but you surpass them all. And then um, end of verse 30, give her a reward for her labor. Honor her for all she has done, another version says. So even her husband believes she's more than what the culture says. 
Her husband is not just treating her like a piece of property. He is not taking an advantage of her. He is treating her like a queen worth, worth far more than rubies or anything else on this land. And this was just so countercultural because men treated women like crap back then. He treats her with so much respect, almost like God would. He is. A godly man and what's crazy to me too is that he treats her with so much respect and not because of the way she looks but because of her heart which goes back to the fact that he believes that she is more than just a piece of property oh man I have a lot to delight in here so the first point that I'm delighting in is the fact that she did not let her circumstances and the culture's lies or norm determine who she was. Literally, if she would have done that, she would have been, she would have saw herself as an evil, good for nothing, piece of property. Does her life prove that she believed this? No, her life proves that she was a woman of God. And that is what I'm delighting in right now is that she conquered the lies in her life and the norm and she did not let her circumstances define her. So the next point that I'm delighting in is the fact that she listened to God and followed God and respected him or like the Bible says feared him above the culture and above the society. So she did not listen to what society told her that she was, but she listened to what God said she was. And literally from the beginning of God's word, God said woman was good. And she believed that. She believed what God said about her above what culture said about her. So I actually have this sheet in the printable. I want you guys to write down what you delighted in. Um, that's the whole point of this series, is delight yourself in the Lord and um, delight yourself in His Word. And so write down what you delighted on. So the last point I wanna give to you guys is the reflection. And I think one of the biggest things about this text that I got out of it is right here. And it says, we can conquer society's lies through the way we live our lives in and through Jesus Christ. I just have a little sticky right here and I'm gonna put that in my Bible. And the last thing what I want you guys to do on your own is ask yourself and reflect. And this is only something you can do for yourself. What lies are you believing? For example, one might be, I need to look a certain way. This is what beautiful, this is what Instagram portrays as beautiful, this is what the world portrays as beautiful. Um, so not true. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Find scripture to fight each and every lie. And yeah, there's just some more questions on there. I kind of just loved how she fought the lies um, of her culture. And I just love how we can do that as well um, if we are um, holding above anything else that a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And so if we're living for God and living to please Him and respect Him, then we will be fighting the culture's um, norm for us. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this Bible study video and I just want to say I'm so thankful that you are here and that you came to learn more about the Bible today. If you are not a subscriber here on Coffee and Bible Time, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you join the family. And yeah, my prayer, my hope for you guys is that you would just delight in the Lord so much and that he would become your everything, your joy, your strength, your hope, and just, yeah, that's my prayer. So I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say hey to anyone who's new, and if you are here and you've been here for a long time, then thank you so much for watching us for so long. And we just love you guys so much, and yeah, have a wonderful day. Bye guys.